three different types of erasers and they all serve a very different purpose. I like to start with the white plastic eraser because it's like a bulldozer. It's really good when you want to just crash through your drawing and make a really big splash. And then I also have this kneaded eraser. This is a brand new one. So what I have to do first is I have to do, ooh, I don't like this one. It's like not very stretchy. Oh, well, um, it'll be fine. Um, so you just mush it up like this. It's really fun. And so when you're done with the kneaded eraser, it should look like this big blob, okay? So this is really good for lifting minor areas. It's not a very strong eraser. In fact, it's a little wimpy. So it's not very good in the beginning, but it is really great. And this is an eraser stick, which is sort of like an eraser pencil. And I might not get to this eraser today because this one, honestly, it's much better when you're in the finishing process. And today we're really gonna focus on short drawings of heads. So we'll see, I might use it, I might not. Now for the Conte crayon, I actually have three different colors today. So we have this darker brown color, we have black, we also have this sanguine reddish color. I happen to like this color a lot because it's just pretty. <laughs> it looks like one of those Renaissance Michelangelo images. It's like, oh, you almost can't go wrong <laughs> with a color like this. I don't know that I'm going to use the black and brown. I might just stick with the sanguine because we're doing such short poses, but who knows? We'll see. They're definitely here if we want them. Okay, so let's get out our timer. And today we are going to be using images by photographers Nan Golden and also Diane Arbus. What I like about their work is that the two of them photograph real people <laughs> because you guys will see online, on Pinterest, everybody's just too polished and full of makeup. And I just love Nan Golden and Darren Arbus because they're really real in terms of the people that they portray. They show a broad range of people types. So I really like that a lot. Okay, we're gonna start with really quick stuff, you guys. So what I'm gonna do is on this page, I might do like four heads on a single page because we're gonna go pretty fast. And we're not gonna do anything that long because I really want you guys to understand the structure of the face and not get caught up in those little details. So let's get started. Three minute pose. I am not warmed up. So I hope you guys don't have any expectations. Okay, so let's get started. And here we go. Okay, I'm going to draw these smaller than I normally do. But that's okay, because I don't want to get too detailed. And keep in mind, you guys, hair. Okay, you're noticing that I'm already getting in the hair, neck and shoulders and keeping it real simple, very, very general, because I don't want to get too detailed too soon in the head. And yeah, this is a mess. <laughs> okay, I'm <laughs> putting the shoulders a little bit. I happen to like starting with the nose because it's in the middle. And for me, it's an easier reference. And remember, you're thinking about the head very structurally, like you're doing the middle of the lips, you're not doing a tracing of the lips, and you wanna get in things like the cheekbones and the jawbone, it's, it's all this structural stuff, the nasal bone, and even the ear, I think is a pretty important landmark to do. Sheesh, I have not drawn with Conte crayon in like years. It's not really the material I use that much, but I do like it because it's neater than charcoal, but softer than pencil. So it's sort of a nice little um, midway point between the two. Oh, I drew this too small. Guys, I can't draw small. I, I need to draw the next one a little bit bigger. I feel a little bit constricted right now. So I don't know. I mean, it's fine. It's just like a three minute pose. It's just a warm up. But at the very least, let's just get this beautiful neck that this figure has and maybe a little indication of where the eyes are. I'm not gonna try to do anything too substantial. I mean, she's got amazing eyelashes and maybe I'll even put in a little bit of the earring because that is sort of an important part of this person. And I'm just making 
really quick adjustments, nothing dramatic. Jeez, that nose is huge. Oh no, that looks terrible. Okay, this is really, oh, I only have 40 seconds yet. All right, but let's maybe establish the neck a little bit better. I think I made it not so great. And you know, the thing about Conte Crayon that you guys might notice is that it does have like these hard spots in it. That's one thing I don't like about it. Like it's not always as soft as I would like it to be, but you know, whatever. Every single material I think really has its limitations. Um, maybe just a little bit more on the eyebrows like that and putting this eye really like behind the nose I think would be very helpful um, because I'm not really trying to get this image looking good I just want to put in the basics right now okay that's it so that's my first sketch let's do another one and I think this one I'm going to draw bigger because I just felt like really ugh, tight and not so great and tell me in the chat you guys what material you're drawing with. And remember, I will take breaks to stop and read the chat and get to your comments. So if you guys have stuff you want to ask me, you can ask me now. And what I'll do in a little bit is I'll scroll back up the chat and see what people are talking about. Okay, so let's take a look at the next reference photo, which is this one. I love this lady. She's just so sassy. I love her hat. Like I really wish people wore hats more. I feel like people have sort of stopped wearing hats I don't know. I just like fedoras because Magneto wears a fedora all the time. Every time I see a fedora, I'm like, oh, Magneto. Okay, let's start with this one. So again, we're going to do something real quick, guys. Three minute pose. And this lady, I'm going to put her a little bit lower and I'm going to draw bigger because ugh, that was not good, guys. Okay, and even in this one, I am definitely going to block out Things like the hair, things like this ginormous hat that she's wearing. Sorry, guys, I know it's cropped. I shouldn't have cropped it that way, but I wanted to make sure I had enough space for everything. So things like the hair, things like the hat, this is not stuff you guys should be leaving for the last minute. This is definitely stuff that needs to get in there. Even things like this funky shawl she's wearing. I love this lady. She's awesome. See, this is why I like Diane Arbus, and this is why I like Nan Golden, because they're not idealizing people and it, it sort of bothers me when you see these people who are so overly polished like they just feel so fake to me and I mean this is a real lady like I, I love this lady she's great okay so let's put in some of the cheekbones maybe a little indication of the lip and remember eye sockets guys okay you can't have an eye if you don't have eye sockets okay that's really crooked <laughs> not good let's raise up the other eye maybe a little indication of the eyebrows when I do get to the eye, I like to start with the upper eyelid. I like to get that established first and then go from there. Oh, this still feels too small for me. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> the next few, uh, when I start doing longer poses, I'll draw a little bit bigger and then that will be easier for me. I'm just one of those people, like, I can't draw small. I feel very, like, constricted when I'm drawing small. Oh, I love her hair. She's got this, like, great, like, 60s hairdo. She's phenomenal. I love these people, they're great. Okay, so here the hair sticks out a little more and actually her hat comes up more on the side. And so remember you guys, make revisions, okay? Don't settle for loss. Don't tell yourself, okay, first pass I'm done, because you're not. You gotta go back, you gotta make changes. I'm gonna slightly block in. I mean, she has like really intense eye makeup. So I definitely wanna capture that. And these creases, really help like see these pockets in her lip those of you guys who saw my anatomy tutorial you probably remember that i talked a lot about those pockets and how important they are and actually next month i'm very excited because we're going to start really breaking down the head and we're going to um really go piece by piece and talk about things like hair and nose and the eyes because a lot of that stuff is very tricky for people i mean we went over the head but oh my goodness there's so much to go over it's like every time I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do that much. I'm going to keep it brief and I never do. It always ends up becoming something a lot more dramatic. Okay, so that is it for that pose. I'm going to do one more because I still feel not in shape. So let's do another one and then I'll take a break and I'll look at the comments that you guys are making. Okay, so here's the next pose. 
I love this image so much. This is Nan Golden. If you guys haven't seen her stuff, she's incredible. She's really raw and intense as a photographer. Okay, let's take a look at this. And let me know in the chat if you guys have heard of Nan Golden or Diane Arbus before, because if you haven't, you should really look at their stuff. They're some of my favorite photographers out there. Okay, this photograph to me is a little bit frustrating because it's very flat and you can't see the back of the head. So that in itself is frustrating, but you know, we'll just do the best we can. Really focus on the bone structure. Like it, it really is problematic when you can't see the back of the head. It, it really makes it difficult. And then also this like cast shadow is also making it hard. You can't really see the neck. So as a reference photo, this isn't really the best photo, but whatever. Okay, let's get in the nasal bone. And remember the lower part of the nose is cartilage. And let's just get in, she's got like really gorgeous eye sockets, the lip. Now notice guys, I am trying really hard not to judge myself because I am not warmed up yet. I have not been drawing all this week, like every day this week. If you guys ever do this, tell me if you do this. Every week I'm like, tonight's the night. Tonight's the night I'm gonna draw. And then I get sucked into something else and I'm like, ah, today's not the day to draw. I promise, I'll do it tomorrow. And then, ugh, this has not been a good day for my student practice. But um, I was very productive yesterday, not in terms of my own artwork, but in terms of art prof, like I'm so stoked. I really want to share with you guys this tutorial that I produced with Song Kang on cross-hatching and I, I like finally got it like in the can yesterday, which was like really cool. Okay, let's just block in. I'm gonna do a tiny bit of tone, not a huge amount, but this figure has like really amazing eye sockets and eyelashes and I'm not so sure I can get away without it. And same thing with the cast shadows. I, I really sort of feel like they have to be in there. Otherwise I'm gonna have trouble getting things going. Okay, it's a little hard with the hair because I can't see it, but you know, do the best you can, that's fine. Okay, um, maybe the lip, the lip is way more dramatic than I have it. Like, oh my God, she's got beautiful, like sumptuous looking lips. Okay, and then emphasize the cheekbones a little bit more. I think I made her not quite narrow enough. So actually I am gonna do a little bit of erasing because she's got like a really unusual shape for a face, which is cool. Very dramatic eyebrows. I definitely did not make them as dramatic as they could be. 16 seconds, let's go. Come on guys, we can do this. We can make it look not horrible. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure we're really guaranteed uh, that that's gonna happen. Okay, cool, we got two seconds left, there we go. All right, let me take a little break and I'm going to look at your comments and see what you guys are chatting about. Okay, let me just grab my microphone so you guys can actually hear me. All right, what is everybody up to? Okay, Jaren Truck says, I noticed that you draw from landmark and internal structures rather than measured up proportions like I've seen usually done when drawing the head. Do you find it easier and more effective? Here's the thing, Jaren, it's not easier in the beginning. In the beginning, it's way harder because it's almost like you're trying to hold on to a slippery fish. You don't really have much of an anchor, but long term, it is definitely faster and it makes it so that you train your eye to draw anything. So like, if you guys tell me to draw a frog, I'm cool with that. Like, I don't feel the need to like measure a frog because I know my eyes are trained to see the shapes, look at the relationships, but if you use measurements for a face, like you can't apply those measurements to a frog, a frog drawing. You have to do it completely differently. So in my opinion, it should not matter what you're drawing. When I hear people saying things like, oh, well, I'm really bad at drawing gophers, but I'm excellent at drawing squirrels. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, It doesn't matter if you're drawing a unicorn or a still life. Like it, it should not matter if you have trained your eye sufficiently to make that happen. Dylan is asking, will we be doing any finished drawings? Probably not today because I think that 
in order for you guys to really understand the head, you got to nail the gesture part. If you don't get the gesture, doesn't matter how fabulous those eyelashes are. I'm not going to compensate for that facial structure. All right, we got a lot of people using different things. Kirsty is using pencil. Hi Hi is using printer paper and pencils. That sounds like something Jordan McCracken Foster would do. He like lives off of copy paper. I've never seen anybody do that so much. Jade Leaf is using hard pastels. And Danya wears hats too. I wear a rain hat. It's like the old paper boy cap. <laughs> yeah, I don't wear hats. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't know, maybe if I was cool and hip like Lauren Welch teaching artist here, I might. Who really knows? VJ Tim, thank you so much for joining us live for the first time. And Jordan Phillips says, loving these photo references. I agree that I'm tired of pretty girl with blank expression. That's what's pervasive on Instagram right now, though. Easy to build an audience drawing that look. Yeah, it's like everybody's got that exact same facial expression. And it's so frustrating when it's like, we have so many amazing people on this planet. Why do we have to draw like 2% of the population? It's a little bit silly when you guys think about it. All right. Uh, Scott is saying my last warm up was the worst. Is this normal? Yep. <laughs> you guys, your improvement should not be linear. Okay. I feel like when I have a drawing session, let's say I do two hour drawing session, it's like a roller coaster. It's like you're up, you're down, you're, it should not be linear. It's not like it goes better, 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 better. Usually it's like bad, bad, worse, even worse, <laughs> worse than you thought possible, maybe a little bit better. So, you know, <laughs> just lower your expectations. I think you guys will be a lot better off. Slice Keeper is saying, did she just erase the Conte? I wasn't even aware that was possible. You can, but the Conte is not perfect. It's not as easy to erase as say Vine Charcoal. And I do find that Conte is much harder to draw lightly with. Like the last couple streams, I was actually doing colored pencil and colored pencil has its own challenges, but I do think colored pencil is easier to stay light. So Conte is, is a little bit, trickier, but the thing is, it's really great because it's not as powdery as charcoal and charcoal kind of drives me crazy for that reason, because it's just like super, super messy. VV says, warm up so much help. Sometimes I think, Hey, I'll just start in a piece. Now I'll never know. Let that happen. First head throw away. Second, eh, third decent. Yeah. I mean, you're doing great <laughs> if that's the case. All right. Wow, there's so many comments. I'm going to do the best you can, you guys. So Audicle says, goodness, this is so difficult. Absolutely adore your commentary and advice, though. I'm so happy I caught the stream. Well, I'm so happy you guys are here, Audicle. It just makes my day when you guys draw with me. It's super fun. Like, who wants to sit in a room and draw by themselves? I mean, maybe some people like that. I get bored. <laughs> like, I feel like I need to get up and do something else. Kirsty says, oh my God, my improvement's not linear. That's the first time I've heard that. I think you just changed everything. I just think you guys, the internet is full of unrealistic expectations, like on social media. Okay. You see these people who are perfect all the time. It's like, come on, nobody's like that. Life is messy. Okay. I would love to be in a Michael Fassbender movie, but it's like, that's not what real life is like. Real life is ups and downs and your progression should not be that predictable, you guys. And I think a lot of artists online really don't want to make themselves look anything than perfect. And it's a real disservice to artists because that's not the way it actually is. Artistic development is messy. Most of the time, you're not getting good work. Like out of all the stuff I'm doing, if I do, let's say 50 drawings, I'm like stoked if I get two that are really good, okay? That really is the real side of that. Antonio is saying, as far as pursuing art and illustration as a career, do you feel that where you live makes a big difference post COVID? Well, I will tell you guys, unfortunately, from what I'm seeing in the news, COVID's not going away next month. So I would say right now, this is a really exceptional time in that it does not matter where you are, but you know something, even when COVID hopefully gets over eventually, it's not important anymore. Like in the eighties, 
if you wanted to be a freelance illustrator, you had to live in New York. You had to cart around your physical portfolio to art directors offices. Now it's all over email. So I think especially for illustrators, it really doesn't matter. I think gallery a little bit different because there's a lot of like networking and socializing, but yeah, for the most part, it's a completely different thing. Scott says, I remember a portfolio guideline at a college saying submit a sketchbook page. It's like, okay, do you really want to see that? Well, it's like, I think they do actually. And I think a lot of students will do like a finished drawing because they think it looks better. But honestly, I don't think that's what they're looking for. I think they want to see the experimentation. They want to see you trying all different types of things. And Tom G says, I love my messy drawings. There's always something nice in them because they came out of my creativity. Exactly. And guys, every drawing you do, it's going to the same pot, okay? You cannot do a drawing and have it hurt you. Like, it doesn't work that way. You're gonna learn from every drawing you do. In fact, it might be the crummiest drawing and you learn a lot from it. And so never tell yourself that, oh, because I did a crappy drawing, I'm a worse artist. You're not, okay? You're just part of the process. It's totally normal. Cloud8456 says, I'm 14. Do you think I should start studying anatomy already? I think so. I mean, if you're having fun, <laughs> go ahead. I don't believe in this concept that, oh, you need to learn this before you learn this. I think what matters more, Cloud, is that you're excited and you want to learn it. That's all you need. Like You don't have to have somebody give you approval to start learning something. And I hear a lot of people say, well, I want to get better at drawing before I start anatomy. And I'm like, just go ahead. Like, it's really not a big deal. It's really important. Okay, guys, let's do some more drawings. So I'm going to get back into my drawing position. And we're going to do poses that are a little bit longer. I think more something like eight minutes or so. Okay, let's get all of my stuff in order and here we go all right let's go a little bit longer this time how about like eight minutes i don't want to go too too long okay all right let me just set up my reference photo so that way i can get started okay now this photo it's a little bit grainy but actually guys that helps Sometimes when there's too much detail in a reference photo, it can actually be really distracting. And so sometimes when I have a reference photo, I'll actually blur it in Photoshop because it's almost like squinting, but without squinting, <laughs> it's kind of awesome. I mean, I squint too, absolutely. But sometimes I like it when the reference photo is not so great. So this one too, I'm gonna draw, oh, this Conte crayon has this like hard spot in it that's kind of annoying me right now. Oh, well, okay. I'm gonna go bigger. And this one, a little annoying because there's no neck that's that visible. And this person, they also have this awesome like glittery hat. Diane Arbus did all of these, uh, not drawings, photos of drag queens and they're awesome. Like all the clothing and the makeup, like so, so cool. So if, if you're interested in um, Diane Arbus, uh, definitely take away. Actually, I think Nan Golden did the same thing. So who knows? Okay. Now see with the hair, got to treat hair as a mass. Okay. Don't draw individual hairs. I'm saying here's a group, here's a group, here's a group. Okay. And that's all I'm going to do for now. And I'm going to try to get the contour of this. I don't even know if this is a hat. It's something. It's cool. I really like it. It's like the type of thing that looks awesome on somebody else that I would like never wear. Because I don't know. I like my wardrobe nice and boring. <laughs> Tell me you guys if you you are into fashion or not. Because <laughs> like I always feel like a big dork when I'm next to like Eloise and Lauren here at Art Prof because they're like really cool and hip. And I'm like, yep, I'm boring. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, let's get in the nose and see, this is also somewhat of a frustrating photo because the whites are blown out. So actually you can't really see, I think the shading that well, but it's okay. Cause this is such a short pose that I don't think it's gonna hurt me that much, but I would just say long-term it's not really drawing a photo that I would wanna use for like a longer term drawing where I'm adding 
a lot more shading and stuff like that. Okay, cheekbones, zygomatic arch, by the way, if you want to be all fancy, and then the lip, remember, draw the line in between the lips first, and she's got great pockets. And then a little bit at the bottom. Oh, geez, I made this like, this is definitely not, there's not enough chin down here. I always do that. Do you guys ever do that where it's like the chin is always too small? Like, I don't know, maybe it just depends on the body part and the person, but I'm always like, oh, it's always too small. That mean legs. I always make legs too short. I don't know what my deal is, but I just automatically do that. And if I don't like tell myself to make them bigger than I think, I'm like always screwed. So sometimes it's like you can overcompensate and sometimes that's a good way to do that. Oh my God, I love these eyelids. Like, aren't these gorgeous, you guys? I mean, this is like totally like a Marilyn Monroe type of um, image. But if I had the time, I'd definitely go in with like my eraser stick. But for now, oh my God, that's hideous. That looks really, I'm sorry, Nan Golden. I'm sorry that I'm like ruining your like gorgeous photo. <laughs> oh dear. See, you know what's good about reference photo? You don't have to worry about people like getting pissy at you for like <laughs> making a terrible drawing. Cause I have. Like I've done portrait commissions where people were like furious with me because I made them look horrible or I, I made them look the way they, they didn't think they looked. That, that's actually more common that it's like they think they look a certain I'm like, dude, you don't look like that. Okay. You, you are older than 50 and I'm sorry, you do have wrinkles. <laughs> like, I don't know, like people's perception, at least when they're getting portraits done, like what they think they look like actually does not have a lot to do with what they actually look like. Like one of my former professors who did a lot of portrait commissions, he told me that this one time he did this portrait of this older man who was bald. And when they unveiled the portrait at this party, the wife said, oh my God, he's bald. It's like, yeah, you didn't know this about him. So it's like, I don't know, people have very strange perceptions of what they think they look like. Okay, I'm, I don't want to step back and look at this because I think I'm going to be upset. That's okay. Abstraction, okay? Don't tell yourselves, you guys, that you were drawing a face. That, that is the kiss of death, all right? If you try to tell yourself, I'm drawing a face, it's got to look like the person, you, you're screwed. Totally screwed. Don't do that. Okay. Look at it as a series of abstract forms and that's going to work much, much better. You're going to get better results because you know, the thing about drawing a face, there's so much like psychological baggage. It's like people have so many like ideas about like what they think faces should look like. And that can really mess with you, honestly. So yeah, just try not to think about that. Okay. So here are the jaw bones. And actually I got to get back up here because I'm sort of ignoring the glittery hat thing, whatever it is. Um, and over here, I do want to accentuate some of the forms in the hair. So you can see guys, hair is not about those individual strokes. It's about the mass. So like, here's a mass, here's a mass. And you look at the direction of the hair. Okay. Cause hair goes a certain way. I mean, it depends on the person, obviously, but on most people, that's generally what it looks like. Okay, I think I got way too dark, but oh well. See, I can't draw small, you guys. Like, especially with something like Conte Crayon, I find it especially difficult. Okay, so there's my rug of tone. And now I do want to fix up the eyes because it's just driving me crazy. It's really annoying. I don't know. It's like when the eyes look weird, it just, I'm like, ugh. I'm like mad. Like, nobody ever gets mad when they do a bad job of a nose. Because I'm like, you know, it's weird looking. Noses are weird. You know, you could be Benedict Cumberbatch and it's still, it's still weird looking. I mean, he is kind of weird looking, but kind of in an awesome way. So here, actually, I lost the eyelid. So I'm going to bring it back with the charcoal pencil because this actually is pretty critical to the way that this drawing looks. And if I lose the eyelids, that really does become a problem later. So here I'm going to do like the lower eyelids. And actually, it's the same thing down here where I lost the lower lid. This is why the eraser stick is like phenomenal. Like I actually did not know about eraser sticks until like I had this student that had one in class a couple years ago. 
And I was like, what is that? And she was like, oh, it's an eraser pick. I'm like, oh my God, I need this right now. This is like my favorite <laughs> eraser because it's, it's so good. It's excellent at getting the, the really like small things that we are sometimes really struggle, at least I struggle with them quite a bit. Okay, see the pocket of the lips? Like that really, ugh, the, the shape, this is like really wonky. I got, it looks weird on YouTube. I should hold my um, drawing board maybe a little bit more straight because I'm getting like a lot, I can see it in the YouTube street, how um, wonky that is. Okay, that's it. So let's do another one and then I'll stop and I'll take a look at what's going on in the chat. Okay, tell me you guys, are you judging yourself? Be honest, okay? Tell me if you're judging yourself because I think we all tend to do it, but you gotta put it aside. You gotta think much more abstractly. Okay, you know what? I am gonna, I gotta switch to just one head per page. I can't do these small drawings. <laughs> okay. All right, let's do like a nice, like I actually think I'm gonna do better drawing bigger. Don't you guys love this lady? She's got awesome glasses. Like she's awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's start. Let's do an eight minute pose. Like, oh my God, she's got a great face. Okay, now, you know what? I was drawing too small. Like I could not get into the rhythm. And now that I'm drawing bigger, I feel better. Tell me you guys in the chat, do you like to draw big? Do you like to draw small? Like what's your preference? People have very different feelings about like the size of their work. Like some people really love to draw small. I mean, I think the important thing you guys, no matter what size you're working, is that you have the experience of drawing different sizes. Like if you only can draw small, that's not good. If you can only draw big, that's not good either. Like you want to have a little more flexibility. Now, I know probably some of you guys are looking at her hair thing. I don't even know, what, is it a hat? I think it's a hat. I don't know. <laughs> well, tell me in the chat what your theory is on the hat. So the hat is kind of frustrating because it's so big, which is why I'm just taking a couple strokes and I'm just pulling out a couple of key areas that I really think are gonna help me because a lot of this stuff is like, you have to pick what you're gonna choose to draw because if you try to draw everything, it's too much. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm saying, okay, these are good like anchor points. Okay, I'm getting too sucked in. I gotta get back in here. Let's get cheekbones. And we're gonna start with the nose, but I'm gonna get into the glasses pretty quickly because the glasses are such an important part of this. Like this is the thing I see a lot and tell me, confess, if you're guilty of this, like people will draw heads with no hair. They'll draw heads with no glasses. And I'm like, if the glasses are there, you gotta draw them, okay? Oh, she's got a great mouth. This is wonderful. You see how different her mouth is than that other person we were just drawing? And she's got great landmarks. Like actually I find older people easier to draw because it's like there's more to draw. Like when you have somebody that's younger, it's actually tougher, I think. Okay, she's got a really nice pronounced chin. So I'm gonna really pull that out. I think a little too much cheekbone over here. Let's pull up the nose. And you can see I'm jumping around a little bit. Like I already put in a little bit of tone, but I think that's because of the Conte crayon. Because the Conte crayon, to me at least, is easier to use when I draw with the side of it. I think when I draw with the tip, I get a little bit too tight. So that's one thing I'm doing right now. So here are the eye sockets. And you can see there's like a little bit of tone here that really sort of accentuates the cheekbones a little bit more. And then now I'm gonna just block in the upper section of the eyelid. And then, see, I don't think I gave her enough eye sockets. Her eye sockets are much more dramatic than that. And then these two little creases at the top and a little bit of hair. All right, I'm just taking a step back. See, I feel like I do need to put in some of this tone stuff because especially like the distance between the nose and the mouth is a little tough when there's like that much shadow going on. So I'm sneaking in the tone, I think much sooner than I normally do, but you know, it doesn't matter. You don't have to always draw the same way, you guys. Like depending on what you're drawing, you might change your mind about your approach and that's okay too. So a little bit of wrinkle in the neck. I love her furry coat. I'm just gonna do 
little indication, just so we can see that there's something like behind her a little bit more. And so there's a little more context for the hair. I think that's more important. Okay, let's get in those glasses sooner rather than later. They're pretty prominent and I'm looking at them in relation to what's happening on the side. And so this eye, eye not eyelash, eye gloss, it goes past the edge of the face. So the glasses, I actually think they're like way bigger than I think they are. Now they're crooked. Okay, that one's really bad. <laughs> I think this one's too small. Yeah, I, I need to pull this one out a little bit more and maybe bring this one up. Yeah, I think I definitely made them too small. Oh, well, I'll come back to it. Okay, these like creases on the side of the nose are so helpful. So definitely pop those in. Nostrils are really important. I sort of feel like a lot of people don't want to put in nostrils because they're like, oh, it looked like a pig nose. It doesn't matter. You got to put them in. Like you need nostrils for that to work. A little bit of the lower lip and she's got these beautiful wrinkles that come down. If you guys watched my lecture on the head, you'll see that I talked a lot about how wrinkles follow the form. Like the wrinkles are not there by accident. They're, they're there because the skin gets stretched. So if you guys think about it that way, it can be very helpful. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is just block in the basic shapes of the hat because it's such an important part of what's going on. And yes, this is a mess, I know. It's a total mess, but you gotta start somewhere. And I think it's easier to clean up a mess than to try to make it perfect the whole time through. She does have an awesome hat. Like, this is just so cool. I don't know, I always think I want to be fashionable, but I don't, like, or maybe I'm just a big wimp, <laughs> who knows? Okay, we only have two minutes left, so I really want to get in some of the eyes because she's got this really beautiful look to her where she's like looking off to the side. So at the very least, I want to capture that, even if I don't really have time to do the rest. And one thing I'm doing with my Conte Cran is I'm really playing with pressure. So sometimes I'm pressing hard, other times I'm pressing light. Like right now I'm trying to be a little more definitive. So I'm pressing a little bit harder. Maybe show a little indication of the wrinkles. I don't want to do too much with the wrinkles because that's sort of a cosmetic part. And do you guys see how really, you don't see a lot of the whites of the eyes. Like so often I see people trying to add the whites of the eyes like it's literal white. And I'm like, uh-uh, like they're not white. Actually, if you look at this photo, they're not even close. I mean, they're like all in shadow. Oh, I totally missed the neck shot. How did I do that? Okay, yeah, don't don't forget <laughs> the neck shot is pretty important in the scheme of things. I feel all over the place, but honestly, I'm gonna blame it on the Conte Crayon. The Conte Crayon's fault. <laughs> you can blame it on your drawing board. Sometimes it's your drawing board's fault, right? Just be like, oh, the drawing board. It's a, it's their fault. <laughs> they're they're the reason why I'm having trouble, right? Okay, I need to go in and make some of these areas more definitive. I mean, the way I think about it, you guys, with drawing, like drawing, you're, you're like killing it, you're resurrecting it, you're killing it again. I mean, that's, that's really normal, right? Please don't take that out of context. <laughs> that's gonna sound really bad. I don't know, when you teach art, oh man, the mouth. Oh, it is so small, crap. All right, it, it's, it, okay, so here's one like basic measurement you guys can use. And it's that the mouth is always wider than the nose. So I'm gonna pull it out more cause I definitely, oh, I did a terrible job with that. Did not even see that until I like stepped back and looked at it, sheesh. Okay, maybe that's, ugh, no, 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 that's not good. Okay, oh God, this feels like a mess. Okay, oh, it looks really bad, shoot. It's okay, it's fine. <laughs> It's one drawing out of many. I just feel bad because it's such a cool photo and I feel like she looked really like chunky. I don't know. Okay, anyway, let me come back to here and let's see what you guys are saying in chat. So ask me your questions. Tell me your comments. Tell me how your drawings are going and what you guys are up to. Okay, let me go up here to the top, Marable is saying, is it an electric eraser? It is not. So if I hold this up, 
this is what the eraser looks like. And what you do on the top, you just like push it down and it just pulls out a little bit. And you can get refills for these, which is really, really nice. I love these. Yeah, I've seen the electric erasers and honestly, I mean, I guess they're cool looking, but I've never actually myself found a real use for them. I happen to like the eraser stick just fine. Rye is saying, would you have any recommendations for an intermediate sculptor trying to improve my skill set toolbox through general drawing technique? I would say always work from life then, because I think if you're a sculptor and I do have experience in sculpture, you really have to think around the form. Because I think oftentimes when people are drawing from a reference photo, it's flat, you know, you can't help but see it as flat. And so you have to actively really try to think around the form. So I think if you're doing drawing for the sake of sculpture, I would really try to not work from photos. I would really try to do self portraits and you can work from objects that you see around. I think that's really, really helpful. All right, we've got some confessions. Fievel says, I'm judging myself. Maribel says, I'm just here for support. Can't draw, but very fascinating. You know what? You can draw. You just got to try it. I mean, I think that's what's really difficult. Sarah Z says, I judge myself a lot with everything, not just with art. You are not alone, Sarah Z. I think that that is extremely common. I just think that a lot of people don't say that out loud. So thank you for saying that. Asma says, what are these pages called in the name of the sketchbook? Well, the links to the art supplies, they're all in the video description below. I happen to be using Strathmore white charcoal paper, but I mean, you guys can use whatever you want. I just like the charcoal paper because it has this like inherent texture to it, which I love, like I'm a big texture person, but you guys can use anything you want. Okay, let's see what else people are talking about. Jordan says, I'm working on not rendering everything into the ground. So drawing small helps me do that. I have to simplify and get ideas across efficiently, hoping to transfer the skill to bigger pieces later. You know what? It is so surprising, Jordan, how hard it is to simplify because you have to see past details. You look at a face, most people will say, oh, eyelashes, of course, but you have to see past those and look at the eye socket. And the eye socket's not obvious. If you're not like looking for it, you're not gonna see that eye socket. So I think that's one of the things that's especially difficult. Ron Nook is saying, what's your pick, Clara? Conte Crayons or Karen Dash? Probably between the two, I would pick Karen Dash because again, the Conte Crayon, it's powdery. You can smudge it very easily. And the whole issue with powdery drawing materials. It's a pain to preserve. I mean, sure, you can use fixative, but I think what bothers me about fixative is that it does darken your drawing a little bit, and it's not perfect. I mean, even after a drawing has been spray fixed, you can still rub it. And so that's what I like about Karen Dash. You don't have to worry about that. And it still mostly maintains the same type of look. Okay. Jaren, oh my God, there's so many comments. I'm going to do the best I can, you guys. Um, let's see. Ab Hinnit Hodar says, self-taught artists who have no access to higher models, do you refer to photos or books? Whichever one works for you. I mean, I think what's important, you guys, whatever reference you're using, draw real people, okay? I think that that's more important. I mean, I had this roommate in college, actually, she had this thing for fashion magazines. She was like obsessed with them. She used this description to like bizarre magazine. It was like three inches thick and stuff. And she used to talk about like, oh, it takes so much to be that beautiful. I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> like it just takes a lot of makeup and fancy clothes and stuff. I mean, you're born the way you look. You can't really do anything about that. And so she used to do this thing where she only used fashion magazines for reference photos. She never looked at anything else. And so consequently, her illustrations always looked really weird. Like she had this illustration, it was like of a waiter. And I'm like, it's a little weird that he looks like he's from the cover of GQ. Like, I think that's strange. So you really do have to think about like 
real people. You know, I mean, like, Fish and Dale's not exactly, like, your average person, so I wouldn't use him as a reference. I mean, you could, but it just, I don't know. To me, it doesn't feel real, and if that's what you're after, of course. Magdalena says, what would you say to a teacher who forbade you from using an eraser and annoyed me a lot and felt like I couldn't make a good drawing? You know what, Magdalena? I'm one of those teachers, okay? So here's the thing. If you guys have a teacher asking you to do something and you're like, what? Ask yourself, maybe they have a reason for that, okay? So one of the reasons why I, when I taught freshman drawing at RISD, I always had my students start out by drawing with crayon. Crayon you can't erase, and it drove them up the wall. When I told them it doesn't erase, they all went, Ugh! <laughs> their heads exploded because everyone's used to having an eraser. But here's the thing, the reason I did that is because oftentimes what I see with freshmen in college is they start to use the eraser as a crutch. And what ends up happening is people erase more than they draw. And so what ends up happening with the eraser is people backtrack a lot. So instead of plunging forward and really dealing and confronting with your mistakes, you're spending all your time erasing them. And in my opinion, you want to have a drawing process that flows more. You don't want to always be going backwards to fix things. And so the more direct you can be, the more that happens. And so what ends up happening when people don't rely on the eraser, they realize, oh, I don't actually need it all the time, right? So I think that that for me is the reason why I would have students not use an eraser. And it's very frustrating, I understand, but there's a reason for that. Okay. What else is happening here? Dylan says, the things I'm drawing are looking bad. It's making my mood change. You know what, Dylan? Really try to turn off your brain. You guys, when you're an artist, your brain is not your friend. It is not. <laughs> like Your eyes are your friend. And that's who you have to rely on. You, you cannot do that, okay? All right, Sarah says, I'm amazed how much a warm-up is helping. Each and every sketch is better than the last. I need to do more warm-ups. Honestly, guys, the first half an hour that I'm drawing in the studio, it's throwaway time. Like, that's just remembering what I want to do, getting my... It, it's like doing push-ups. Like, you're just getting started. That is really fine. Um, Shang Yi Lee is saying, I'm going to Unite next year. I really like to draw a portrait. I don't know if I should study fine art or illustration. Well, Shangyi, I don't know if you're a student or a lifelong learner, but I think you should try both. Because honestly, you don't really know until you try both. Like I tried illustration when I was in art school and I was like, wow, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> and so I realized like, yeah, yeah, this is not my thing. But I would never have known that if I had not tried it. So I think that's very important. Just give it a chance. Okay. Lara Larson says, my professor didn't let us use an eraser. It is like using the undo button. Yeah. I mean, Jordan McCracken Foster, who does Procreate, he's our like digital resident artist. He said that there are some people on Procreate who really are so nervous about messing up that they, they just keep their hand on the undo button. And I'm like, I don't think that's good. I, I think you, you don't want to be thinking about everything as like erasing a mistake. Like you want to like plow forward and actually make some process. Jade Leaf says, I'm using the hard pastel for that reason. It's not as easy to erase. I want to be more confident in my marks without having the safety of erasing any mistakes. Just want to live with the mistakes. Exactly. Like you've got to deal with that stuff. Okay. And I think also if there's anything I would say, about drawings that I really think is important, it's confidence. Like you guys ever look, like look at a Rembrandt drawing, okay? Just look it up, okay? Whether it's an etching or if it's chalk drawing or ink wash. Oh my God, like you look at a Rembrandt drawing and he knew, he was like, here's a mark, I'm putting it down, deal with it. You can feel that confidence. Like you guys ever look at drawings and it's like the drawings like apologizing. It's like, I'm sorry I exist. I'm crappy. I'm sorry. And I'm like, I don't want to do a drawing like that. Like I want to do a drawing that is like, I'm here, deal with it. Like your drawing really should have attitude in that way. And I think that's a great way to get it going. Thank you so much to Tom G for the super chat. Really appreciate your support. As many of you know, Artprof, our content is 100% free. 
and we rely entirely on donations. So when you guys support us, every little amount helps us so much. Okay, guys, let's do some more drawing. How about let's do like a 12 minute pose. I think that will be good to get me started. And this time I'm actually gonna remember to move my microphone. So sorry about that if the last one was a little bit on the quiet side. Okay. Let's get in here and try a 12 minute pose and see where we can take this. Okay, let me see who's the next person in our stream. Okay, oh my God, this drawing is bad guys. Like tell me in the chat, are you looking at your drawing like I am and going, ugh, <laughs> don't, don't look at it. Okay, this is not, this is not about the product. Is about the experience of drawing. That matters more because you know what I'm going to do with this drawing when I'm done, you guys? It's going to go in a portfolio never to be seen again, probably. So it's like, who cares? If it's not going anywhere, it's totally fine. Okay, so let's get in here. We're going to do the next photo. Oh, I love this photo. This is so great. I love the hair curlers. They're just wonderful. Okay, so let me go in. And I'm actually going to draw on this side like that. And let's get started with the timer. Okay, you guys still with me? Let's keep drawing, okay? I could do this forever. I love it. Oh my God. You know, it's like, even if my drawing doesn't look that good, I still have fun. Like, I don't know. You guys tell me if this is true for you. It's definitely true for me. Like when I draw, the whole world disappears. I'm like, all the crap of just everyday life that people have to deal with, it disappears. I'm like, you know what? Life is fine because I'm drawing. It, it lets, I don't know, for me, drawing is really an escape because it's like the concentration that it requires is so wonderful. And you know what else I think is cool about it, you guys? I think drawing is one of the few times for me, and you guys can tell me if this is true for you too, that I, I really like stop stop and I look and I slow down. Like the rest of the time I'm like on my smartphone and doing a million things. And it's like, you need that time to just settle down and, and look, look at the world. I mean, isn't that remarkable about drawing that it gets us to do that? Oh crap. I'm making the rollers like all different sizes. Okay. Whatever. I'll get back to it. I shouldn't fixate on that. I just want to block in a little bit more the eye sockets. This this image is trickier because you know something, their eyebrows are like drawn on. So they're sort of in a weird artificial place, but that's okay. And I do think this person has like a much longer face than I made. So let's just draw over that. So does everybody see this? Like I drew the chin here and yeah, I don't like it. And I could take time to erase it, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna keep going because every time you guys pick up your Conte crayon to reach for the eraser and to draw, it's a disruption. Like it gets in the way of your drawing flow. And if I can just keep going, 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 that's a lot better. Okay, still making changes, like especially the forehead. It's like way more square and I have to get the cheekbones more prominent, especially the jawbone is like all the way down here. Okay, oops, and then that moves down this. Yeah, like every time you fix one thing, you got to fix eight other things, <clears throat> but that's okay. That's totally fine. Okay, uh, maybe place the ears, which are much lower. Remember, the ears are cartilage, so they're not very structured, but they are good as a landmark. Like they, they will help you find things. Okay, so let's block in the nose. This person doesn't have a lot of creases, so it's actually hard, and their lip is like, really small, geez. People have been asking me actually, like how do you draw teeth without them looking creepy? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they do look creepy. Like if you not, don't really think it through, they, they can be difficult to do. My answer to not making them creepy is don't outline every single tooth. I think that's what happens. Like you just end up looking really strange. Oh, this is such a cool photo. I just love this photo. Um, yeah, I hope you guys like the photos because I want to draw real people. I do, and that, that's a taste thing, you know? I mean, maybe not everybody wants to do that. Maybe everybody wants to draw women who are size zero and white, but you know, whatever. <laughs> like, 
I don't want to do that. That to me doesn't represent what the world is really like. And I think representation is important. Okay, let me get the sides of the nose and maybe a little indication of the nostrils. Oh man, the eye sockets are not that clear in this photo. So I'm going to just, I don't know, estimate. And actually there are these like, almost like bags under the eyes. That's sort of helpful. Um, and let me redefine the cheekbone because I lost the cheekbone for a little while. See guys, the cheekbone, it's like, it's not that dramatic, but it really like makes the difference big time. Okay, I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna accentuate the rollers because they're such a critical part of this portrait. And actually the hair should be a lot higher. So let's just block that in. And you guys will notice with the rollers, I'm not gonna like outline them. I'm just gonna try to approximate the shape. Like even this, this little like patch of hair, I think is pretty helpful. And I don't want to go too dark. I mean, I know eventually I will, but I don't want to do too soon, like just in case I change my mind about a couple things later. See, like here I see a shape and actually the ear is all the way over there. So it's like, look at those shapes, you guys. And again, here it gets confusing because this is just like a black shape, but that's okay. You just get in the basics like that. All right, let me work on the eyes. Again, I like to start with the upper eyelid and develop both eyes at the same time. Like don't go eye by eye, that, that's not such a good idea. And this person, their eyelashes are like really accentuated. So I am gonna start there and I'm gonna slow down a little even though I don't want to. I don't know, like I always get stressed. I'm like, oh, I'm not being gestural enough. I don't have enough energy. In my drawing. That's a personal thing. I mean, maybe some people like drawings to be a little more, I don't know, slow. I happen to like drawings that are really like, uh, I don't know, angsty? I don't know if that's the word for it. Who knows? It, it's a taste thing. You know, there's no style that's better than another. It's just like, okay, what's your preference? That's fine. Okay, now the eyebrows, God, they are high up. Where is that? Yeah, they're drawn on. So it, it's like you have to look at that because this is not what the anatomy does. Like if you try to put the eyebrows where they're supposed to be, they're not going to work because in the photo, yeah. Sheesh, could I, do I really need more forehead? That's insane because I thought I had like too much before, but actually, yeah, my God, this person has such like unusual features. So I am going to move that up. And in here I am going to pull up maybe a little more forehead because that is sort of distracting. Okay, I'm gonna jump back and I'm gonna start, I need to like, I don't know, like it, it doesn't feel struck, like I really want the structure to come across. So I'm gonna try and focus on that. Maybe this little shadow will help me out. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just like picking like little spots to accentuate. Like I'm not gonna draw the whole lip, but I'm gonna emphasize the part that I think sticks out the most that that's what's hard about anatomy it's like you gotta pick what do i draw first that's really hard for a lot of people it's like do i draw this do i draw that and every drawing is different i i don't know that you can always follow the exact same way because like this person has a very dramatic chin and so i'm gonna try to make that a little bit rounder and then wow like beautiful eyelids i just love their eyelids maybe yeah, I got to define the eyelids more. You know, honestly, you guys, if you're drawing eyes, what matters more is the eyelids than the pupil. Like a lot of people get really fixated on the pupil and I get it because that's like, that's the part of the eye that people communicate with. And so it makes sense to me, but from a structural point of view, it's really the eyelids that are going to do the trick for you guys. So keep that in mind. Okay, there's a really nice shadow here is coming down the side. And now let's really pump up the nose because I didn't really do a great job with that. Okay, let's come back to the lip, trying to define a few more spots. Um, it still feels like really wonky to me. I take it back, maybe it will do a long drawing. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's like I like doing the gesture drawings, but then like part of me wants to be like, I don't suck. I really kind of make something that because like, this is all set up. Like none of this, 
is intended to look good. Like I really am still putting in areas. I'm still trying to define things. And so it, it is loose on purpose, but then the consequences it looks really crappy, which I don't like. This person has tiny pockets on their lid. Like it's so small. And actually let's put in a little bit of the teeth just so subtly so that they're there. Okay, now I'm gonna squint and step back. And you know, I don't like these lines. These lines are, they're a little bit too definitive and I don't want them to be that way. And I wanna show like the mess of the hair. So I'm just gonna play around and, and toss in some like crazier marks because I, I don't feel like I'm really capturing that. And that is pretty important to me. I, I feel that the hair is like, geez, like half this person's personality in the photo really is in the hair. Oh, it's beautiful. I just love that. Okay, maybe more down here. And then let's really define. Oh yeah, I'm totally ignoring the neck. Okay, let's give the neck a little more. See, what I do like about the Conte is it's pretty fast. Like you guys will notice when you lock in the shading, like it, it happens quickly. It, it's not something that takes time. And so that's one of the reasons I like it because it is just such an efficient material. Okay, let, let's define, oh, you guys can't see. Let's define more like the top of the hair because this area is pretty like articulated. And so I want it to have that like stiffness to it. Whereas some of the rest of the hair is very, very different. And I would take the time and go in and define the rollers. I'm, I'm not gonna really bother to do that right now, but yeah, eventually I would. Okay, at the very least, I just want the hair to like have personality. I don't want the hair to just sit there and not really participate. Oh, I still feel like I need the eyebrows like too high. I don't know, whatever. Ooh, philtrum, we gotta do the philtrum. Okay, here we go. Philtrum is this like form in the middle that's in between the nose and the mouth. And it's important because if you don't have it, you're not really gonna get a good sense of space. Okay, let's pull in some of the kneaded eraser. I like the kneaded eraser for when I wanna like de-emphasize things. So like in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna like pull the uh, areas and like if I wanna highlight this, oh, that's so satisfying. <laughs> that felt good. You guys ever have that moment with you're like, ah, that feels good, nice. <laughs> it's almost as good as watching a Michael Fassbender movie. <laughs> Not quite though. Okay, um, hmm. I need to define this eyelid. This eyelid is not happening. And maybe a little bit more at the bottom. Shoot, I might have already put those left. I don't know, maybe I'll, uh, no, I want to do another one. I don't want to keep going on this. I don't want to just like harp on this one image. I, I, do, I do need to do more because you know what? Producing and being somebody who makes a lot of drawings, it really helps you. It really, really does, you guys. So don't be afraid to just produce, produce, produce. That, that's sometimes the best way to learn is not hold back on that. Oh, shoot, I really messed up this lip. Oh, crap. Come on, I want that pocket. Okay, so that is that pose. Let me take a quick break and I'm gonna look at some of your comments before I start the next one. So actually, it should look more like this. It's because my drawing board is tilted. It looks a little wonky. So I think I made them longer. I don't know. I'd rather make them longer than not long enough. I feel like that would be better. Okay, so let me go back to my pop stage. And if you guys didn't know, you really should join us in the Discord because it's kind of awesome there. And if you guys go into the Discord, you'll see that we have a channel called Draw Alongs, and that's where you guys should post your stuff because we will be hanging up there in a little bit when the stream is over and we can chat a lot more. Okay, let's see what people are talking about. Uh, Marinka says, a lot of people in the stream, my drawings always suck in my eyes. It's, I, that's just part of being an artist. Like who looks at their drawings and like, I'm amazing. Like, I don't know, maybe some people do, but I don't. I definitely am always like, oh, it could have been better. Or I could have done this. Like, I don't think I've ever done a piece where I'm like, oh yeah, like home run. That's never really the case. B 
PV says, good luck. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Go to post the drawings quickly in the Discord. Awesome. Yeah, you can post the drawings anytime. Like, you guys don't have to wait until after the stream. And even if you're watching now or later, you can post them anytime. And I've had a lot of people go back and do the old draw longs and then post those pieces. Like, I just love seeing that, you guys. So definitely take advantage of that. Miguel is asking, how would you set up your camera? You know what? I actually have a video on that. So if you go to artprof.org, there is a section called Teaching and Learning Art Online. And if you click on Equipment and Software, you'll find it. So you definitely, that, that's a stream a lot of teachers have been using quite a bit because I know a lot of people are looking for ways to do a demo online. All right. Elizabeth Byers says the drawing of the older woman only needed a few erasers on the left eye and a bit in the mouth, less than a minute. It looks super to me. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this stuff could be better if I gave it like two more minutes. Let's see. Ilke says really appreciate that her absolutely amazing classes and talks are free for all. Thank you for everything. You know something? I was adamant that that would always be the case at Art Prof. And people thought I was crazy. I mean, when I started Art Prof in 2014, like nobody cared. Like it took me so long to get people on board for this idea. And I think just like only recently people have been starting to give me a little bit more respect for it because I did not get, I, people really crapped on me for a long time, especially in academia, because it just, you don't stream on YouTube when you're a college professor. Like that, that's for like lower life forms. Like that's sort of their attitude. But you know what? I don't care. I'm like, Cares. Like, I'm just putting this out there and it's for all of you. I, I just think there's enough platforms out there that charge money. But, you know, for some people, $5 a month is a barrier. Some people can't do that. And I was like, it's not fair. It's not fair that access to art education is entirely based on money. I don't think that should be the case. So, I mean, I don't think it's the best business move because we struggle with budget and we struggle with having enough money to pay staff and stuff like that. But as long as I can keep going, let's hanging on my bare thread, we'll still do this as much as I possibly can. Jade Leaf says, I don't know who I just drew, but I can tell you one thing on my page, they definitely had a really rough night. Yeah, but Jade Leaf, that's great. You know why? Because that to me says that your drawing has a personality. Because in the end, sure, anatomy is great. Fabulous if you can find those academic arts, but it's like if you guys see that there's a lot of stuff online where people are so obsessed with anatomy, and it's like I don't know what that means, but it's like ultimately if your drawing doesn't have personality and character, it doesn't matter. It's, it's like your drawing might as well just be like a science chart, like that's really not that interesting. And so, Jade Leaf, I think that's great, I think it's wonderful. Ilke is saying, How do I join the Discord? The link is in the video description below. So if you just scroll down, it'll say join our Discord server. You do have to have an account first, and then you can join the server. Okay, let's see what else people are talking about. Emma says the expressiveness of the people makes me feel more comfortable with the gestures because it feels kind of like caricatures. It's real people. Have you guys noticed that when they put fashion models in magazines, like they really do try to make people look very similar to each other. It's like that same glazed look and like super smooth skin. And it's like, if you think about it, a lot of people on Pinterest and a lot of those places, like they're actually really homogenous looking. Like they really don't, I don't know. They, they don't have a lot of character to me. Like to me, people who really are distinctive looking, like they're a little funny looking, you know, like, okay. Eddie Redmayne, you're so cute. I love your soft British voice. But he's funny looking. He's got like a really weird, like crooked lip. And if you think about like, I've always thought Julia Roberts was really weird looking. I mean, I do think that she's very attractive, but she's not like conventionally pretty. And so that's sort of what I like about some of these images is that the people are not homogenous. They're not like polished and buff the way that People think they have to be. ZU says, I feel so motivated by watching your live. I should start to practice from tomorrow. You should. Absolutely. I think that it's never too late to get started. I know there's a lot of people here who started later in life 
That's awesome. Good for you. I think that's amazing. And this is a really nice comment from David who's saying knowledge belongs to everyone. No one should privatize it. I know like a lot of the reason I started ArtProf really it was my frustration with academia and higher education because it's like nobody should pay 70,000 US dollars a year to go to school. I mean, who can afford that? I could not send my kids to a private college. I could not afford it without scholarships or something like that. So absolutely. Sarah Z says, I'm struggling with creating full artwork. I'm practicing a lot, but I don't feel confident enough to create a finished artwork. You know what you should do, Sarah Z? You should make a drawing and call it a sacrifice drawing. Like you tell yourself, this drawing is definitely going to die. Like you mark it for death. This is sort of like, I don't know, be an assassin for your drawing and, and just say, I'm going to overdo it. I'm going to do too much to the point that I kill it. And you have to go too far before you know exactly what is finished. And actually we're doing a stream, Sarah, on Saturday about how you know whether your artwork is finished. So me, DP, and Alex, we're gonna be talking about that. That's the stream that you'll probably wanna watch. Wanna give a shout out to 10,000 Crows for their super chat. Thank you so much for your support. Love it when you guys give us the support that we need to keep our prof up and running and free for everybody. Karen says, I'm finally feeling I'm starting to get it. They are not great, but definitely have character. You know what, Karen? Between anatomical accuracy and character, I will take the character. I really will. Because like I said, it's like the anatomy is not everything. It's something that's a foundation that you can build upon, but it is by no means, I think, the number one priority. Thank you for the super chat, Scott. Gilly, you guys are being so generous today. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate that. Ree M says, Prof Lu, do you have a favorite sculptor you can recommend me to study? Well, it depends. I think you're probably asking about figurative sculpture. I mean, there's so many sculptors out there, but if you want to do figurative sculpture, I would say Rodin, R-O-D-I-N is phenomenal. And also Bordel. You know, let me put these into the chat because you guys are not going to know the spelling. So I would say, um, God, how do you spell Bordel? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Bordel. And I would say Carpo. And um, let's see, Carpo and also Rodin. Who are some other good figured? I mean, Michelangelo, although you're going to feel really inferior when you <laughs> look at his sculptures. Uh, there's probably others. I'll have to take a thing about it. But those are the three that really come to my mind right away. And Ilke says, I'm applying to art schools this year and the nude figure drawing requirements are making me nervous because I never had the chance to take an art class before. You know what? With COVID-19, nobody's doing live figure drawing right now. It's not as good, obviously, as drawing from a live model, but just use photos from the internet because you don't have a choice. Nobody is drawing from the live model right now. Absolutely. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Giacometti. I love Giacometti. Oh my God, he's so good. Yes, for sure. Okay, guys, let's do some more drawings. So let me get back. Um, Let's do, hmm, let's do a 20 minute pose. Why not? I think I won't go longer than that because I want you guys just to see the initial and then the next draw along, we will be doing more sustained images and then we'll go from there. Okay, cool. So let's get back. All right. I have to say, you guys, I just love the energy in these live streams. I got so excited about it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Live streams are exhausting. Like the last live stream, I like took a nap. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I am getting older and I am turning into an old fart. So <laughs> that definitely has something to do with it for sure. Oh, you guys, I'm excited about the next image. Look at this. Oh, okay. Now this, this is emotion. Like this is like, oh, gut wrenching. This is Nan Golden. I mean, if you look at Nan Golden's work, Nan Golden's work, it's really intense. I mean, it's not for everybody because it is like gut wrenching. And she did a lot of self portraits that are hard to look at. But if you guys like heart wrenching images that get to you, Nan Golden is your artist. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna do a 20 minute pose and we'll see where we go with this. By the way, foreshortening you guys, remember foreshortening. <laughs> this is a foreshortened head and it's gonna drive you guys crazy. 
But you know what? That's okay. Oh, I should move my microphone. Sorry about that. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna draw this one pretty large because I really need it. And, and this one, you really can see the back of the head. So actually I'm gonna start back there, which means I'm gonna lower this. Yeah, because the back of the head, you guys oftentimes, people don't realize this, but the back of the head is big. Like it's a lot bigger than you think it is. So it's tricky. Oh man, now I'm like regretting this photo. I'm like, oh, it's really foreshortened. <laughs> I don't know, how many of you looked at this and went, foreshortening, crap, 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 crap. Okay. Um, so the cheekbone's a great landmark. And then here's the jawbone underneath it. And then we have the chin, another cheekbone here. Does everybody see the shoulders way back there? Little bit of the lip of the ear. Yeah, geez, there's so much back of the head. I think I need to like, oh geez, I might have to make the head like a little bit smaller. I don't know. It looks like a hat right now. It looks really bad. It's hard, like you don't think there's that much back there, but there really is. Okay, now I'm gonna try to find, oh, actually I should do the side and just a little bit of the clothing. Just as a good landmark. And, oh, this is a nice clavicle, guys. Look at that clavicle, gorgeous. Okay, who else gets excited about <laughs> finding clavicles? I'm probably like the only one. I'm like, ooh, it's probably a process. Awesome. <laughs> okay, um, the nose is like, whoa, wonky. It comes down. And does everybody see the eyes are like tilted? Like they're not straight across. Like the eyes actually are here. So I'm gonna try to block in like the eye sockets are here. This eye socket is tilted up more. I'm gonna do a little bit of the eyebrow just as a landmark. Oh my God, this is already a disaster. Shoot. I think I gotta move it like all the way down. Crap. Oh man, that puts the chin like down here. Yeah, remember, make changes. Don't settle for less. Just draw right on top of it. It's fine. It really is okay. I mean, I, I'm doing well today in terms of like not judging. I'm like, don't judge, don't judge. Don't do it, just have fun. Just have fun, right? That, that's the most important thing. Okay, let's get in a little bit of lower lip. This is awesome. Does everybody see there's this like little pudge of like muscle to the right? Because really you guys, the key to getting a good lip that like really is like in the face, you have to show the muscles around it. If you don't show the muscles around it, Oh, you know, I just made a quintessential mistake. Okay, do you guys see this? I tried to draw the lip going straight across as if it were a front view, but it's not like that. It's tilted. It's just like the eyes. So let me redo that. Actually, oh, crap. All right, let's just use this. Okay, so actually the pocket of the lip is here and it does tilt upwards like this. And so that also tilts the lower lip like this. Yeah, that's better. Don't make that mistake that I just made. You can't draw the lip like it's a front view. Because it's not a front view. We're looking down on the figure and to the side. Oh my God, there's so many adjustments. Crap. Now I, I think the mouth is too, uh, too low. <laughs> Let's try that again. I think, yeah, definitely. This is gonna take a while because of the foreshortening. It's just like messing with me so bad. Um, Let's move the lower lip there. And, and this photo, again, like the others, like the lighting is not fantastic, but that's okay. That's okay, Nan Gold, Gold, bleh, Golden. I know that you, you were not intentionally trying to make reference photos for an art prop live stream. <laughs> we'll forgive you in this one instance. Ah, oh, shoot. See, I'm getting picky. This is not good. I gotta move on, move on. Okay, I know it looks terrible, but that's okay. It really is, right? I think. Let's just add that little pudge. I gotta get back to the eye, not eye, the cheekbone, and a little more eye socket here. I, I really don't wanna lose that direction. Like I want that tilt. And this eye is like, what? What is going on here? Is that, oh, I need to show the, okay. Here's the cheekbone, yeah. The cheekbone comes out that way. And the forehead is more straight. And then the side of the forehead, it's weird. Like the forehead is like sort of boxy, but it's also tilted. So I'm sort of having trouble 
And actually, you don't see much of the ear, so I'm going to get rid of this contour so I don't get confused because you don't see it. It's, it's really just like covered. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the eyes and then I'm going to do my rugged tone, okay? So if I do the upper lid, which is not as round as I think it is. And also, do you guys see how one eye is a little bit bigger than the other? Like this eye feels just a little bit larger because it's closer to us, okay? And the eyelid's so important here, guys. Wait, what did I do? Is that the upper lid? I'm so confused. Shoot. Uh, okay, wait. <laughs> Is that? Oh my God, I'm getting like, I don't even know what lid I'm trying to draw. Okay, I need to stop this over again. I'm like so confused. Okay, this is the upper lid, the edge of the upper lid, and then here's the top of the upper lid. Okay, and now here's the pupil. Okay, that's a little bit better, maybe. No, sorry, I'm getting a little whiny. Who here feels whiny? <laughs> I, I really do try not to whine. I, it's really hard not to, though. Poor husband gets it all the time. So I'm like, I can't whine. And, oh my God, this looks, she looks like she's got like cross. Okay, this is terrible. This is really bad looking, guys. Okay, but we're going to fix it. it. We are. Okay. I think I, I just got to like fill this, right? Okay, I think it's time for the rug of tone. Like, even though this is a mess, I, I have to put in the tone because I'm totally like losing the structure here. Like this is really not good. Yeah, and I really need to think about this shadow. There's a darker shadow back here. Okay, we, we gotta put in the hair because it's a mess. It's such a mess, oh my God. Keep it loose guys, okay? You don't have to feel like what you're doing has to be so definitive. And I'm looking for edges. Like back here, the edge is a lot darker oh my god what what is wrong with that head it looks like a coconut Ugh. tell me what your head looks like are you drawing a coconut because i am <laughs> let's go down see i i don't want to get too dark because like if i do that too much i'm gonna like really lose a lot that's going on oh man th this drawing is a disaster See, it's like, things don't get better. <laughs> they definitely get worse, for sure. Oh man, this is so bad. Okay, well at least I have 12 minutes <laughs> to like redeem myself. A uh, couple strokes in here, j just as a placeholder. I I'm not really like trying to do that. And I do wanna lift a little more. Oh, I love this kneaded eraser. I have not used kneaded eraser in so long and it just, it just feels good. Okay. I love lifting these surfaces. That's just fantastic. Okay. So tell me in the chat, is this foreshortening driving you up the wall? <laughs> I, let's just say I like to keep it challenging for you guys. You know, no, none of this, like, I can only draw one hand for two months. You, you got to keep it alive. Keep it going. Okay. Uh, maybe a little tone under the eye and just the lower lid for sure. This eye is so, so subtle. Like I, it's really hard to do. This eye is, oh, I need my eraser stick so bad here. Okay, so let's just get rid of this. I have totally, like that is my fault. That is not the photo. Okay, let's make that more accentuated. And then this eye is way further to the left than I thought it was. Oh, these eyes are such a pain because they're like so foreshortened and Oh my God, you guys, it looks really bad. It looks so <laughs> crap. I, I'm gonna for, oh my God, this is really, this is like worse than like the other two combined. Oh man. Well, look at it this way. It can only get better. That That's the good thing. If you're like, oh, it looks terrible. You're like, oh, it can only improve at this point, right? Yeah, and the lighting is subtle here. Oh my God, you guys, this is not, good. this is bad. Bad, bad, bad. What is going on? Do I need more? I, I just gotta keep moving, you know? I, I think I'm staying too long in the eye area and I'm getting a little fussy. That's not good. I don't recommend that. I really have to work on the lip though. The lip, I did not leave the lip in a good place. <laughs> I left it in a terrible place actually. So let's, let's just really like draw, draw the lip. 
on the upper lips up this way. And then, like, do you guys see the tilt to the lip? Like, it's subtle. It's not that easy to see, but it's definitely there. Okay, there's the lower lip, and then I want to accentuate the bottom. And then there's that little pocket that I was telling you guys about. And then you don't see much of the chin because of the foreshortening. Oh my God, please let this look better when I step back. Please, please. Uh, no. What is wrong? Is it the forehead? So the thing is, you guys, I'm not really looking at the photo to get the, as much as I'm just looking at the drawing. Like it's gotta work in the drawing. If it's not working in the drawing, you're not in good shape. I still think it's something wonky with the forehead. Maybe like that? I gotta squint. Oh, you know, I think it's too much jawbone. I think this jawbone is too dramatic. Let's make that a little bit less, although <laughs> that's not enough. So let's lift. This is where the kneaded eraser is like so, so helpful because I can go in and just like lift a couple of areas like this and maybe give them a little bit more chin like that. Okay, this drawing is driving me crazy. Who, who's being driven crazy by this pose? My fault. I mean, I picked this photo. Next time I should just be like, oh, well, this is easy. The thing is, I don't do that. Like, I don't know if you guys do this, but when I look for a drawing to work from, I never think about how hard it's going to be. I just am like, oh, that looks cool. And then later on, I like regret it. I'm like, why? Why did I pick this photo? <laughs> this photo is really hard. Ooh, that felt good. You guys see that? Maybe... See, I need my bulldozer eraser, but I just dropped it. Maybe I'll grab it on the next thing. And just going back and define. You know what I need? I need a new Conte crown. That one was kind of dying on me. Okay. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to add, like, I don't know. I just feel like the hair looks like a helmet. So at the very least, I, I just want to, like, work on the transition. Like, the hair into the head, I feel like is really bad. And so at least if I can get the hair to look like it, it's stuck to the head. Well, it's not too, see, I keep making the same mistake. Are you guys doing the same thing? Like I keep drawing things as if it were a frontal view. Like I, I definitely drew the forehead like that. So now I gotta get that tilt. Oh man, and I did the same thing with the eyebrows because this eyebrow should be higher than the other. See, so that's the difference, you guys. I'm not measuring, but I'm looking. So I'm saying, okay, this eyebrow should be higher. Yeah, this eyebrow is like all the way up there. And then this eyelid is also higher, is it? Oh, no, 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 this one is, yeah, see, th this is where the comparisons really come into play. So it's like, I don't need to measure because I'm looking. Oh man, and this one's also missing the tilt. So actually I'm gonna use my eraser stick for this because I really want this eye to be a little more solid sort of lost it a little bit. And then I also lost the bottom part of the eyelid. So let's get that back in there like that. Maybe that doesn't look so bad. Ugh. Shoot, help, help you guys, help me. And then, shoot, there's, there's like, ugh. Ugh. you know, I was like, oh, I'm doing so well. I'm not judging myself. And now I'm like, crap, spoke too soon. I just shouldn't do that. I shouldn't be like, oh, I'm doing well today. Like, that's not a good idea, guys. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, I think it's getting better. But the thing is, it's like, I sort of had to make a mess to make it get better. Like, does everybody see that? Like, it, it doesn't look better while you're trying to make it look better. It actually looks worse because you have to really clean things up. Okay, let me get that going. And let's define the eye a little bit better. Maybe a little bit less. I think I put too much hair on this side. So it's sort of messing with me a little bit too much. And this cheekbone should also be higher, right? If that's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This cheekbone should go up and then this comes down, right? Doesn't that look better? I think, <laughs> who knows? It's a real, it, this drawing is a mess. Sheesh. Okay, let's just make this more articulate here on this side, a little more rug of tone down there. So right now, you guys, I do feel I'm fighting with the drawing a little bit, but you know what? I think that's a good thing. I think it's good 
to just keep at it and not stress about that. Because that, that's what it is. It's like when you draw, it's like a war. <laughs> a really, like a war that, that is, nobody dies. So <laughs> it's a good thing. Okay. See, I, I love the eraser stick because it just gives me this like really nice structure to work with. Now this, I'm not told to the knobs. Does it go up there? Yeah, I'm having trouble with this edge. This edge is not good. Oh my God, it looks so bad, you guys. Oh my God, like what? Sheesh. Okay, well, this is not going on the thumbnail. <laughs> We're gonna have to pick something else to be the thumbnail. Because <laughs> uh, no one's gonna click on this video if they like see how bad my drawing is. <laughs> oh God. I'm just putting in those wrinkles because I want to like see. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna really step back and I'm gonna make more changes to here. I don't get, guys, I wanna get these. Like I really, really do. Oh, shoot. Oh gosh. And I, I didn't even do the eyebrows. I mean, the eyelashes, jeez. This person has like beautiful eyelashes and I'm like not helping them. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. And, Oh yeah, 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 the lower lid. Okay, let's let's put that in. It's a little bit too thick, but I just want to put in something so it doesn't look so bare. Is that? No, 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 it's not tilted. <laughs> Shoot, it's having. I I'm just having so much trouble with this tilt. Like the tilt is really a pain in my butt. Oh, you know what it is? The lower lid here. It's like underneath the upper lid. Is that it? Oh man, I'm really overworking this, you guys. Oh my God. Oh my God, it looks terrible. It looks so bad. It's really not happy. Okay, you know what I gotta do? I gotta move on. It's too much, too much picking. I can't do that. And does this, okay, we gotta work on this lip because I like totally colored in the lip and now it's like way too dark. And sheesh. Maybe little smudging. Now you guys will notice I don't smudge. I rarely smudge when I'm drawing because I just find that it's too easy to want the smudging to do everything for you. And it, it can be a crutch like the eraser. It can become a crutch really fast. So you have to be careful that uh, you're not trying to do too much. I mean, it does feel good. Like, don't get me wrong. Smudging, in fact, let's do a little smudging up here while we're at it. But then I like to go in and like layer on top of it at the same time. So you get both. You don't want to just have one. Oh, this piece is like not that good. Oh my God. This is definitely, this, this is a battle. Okay, you guys, this is like serious war wounds in terms of drawing. I just, I don't know that. I'm not getting like the elegance of the eye. And I, I really like can't tell. Oh man. All right. Well, you know, it sort of sucks, but I'm just going to do another one after this. I think because I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, I'm so frustrated that I think I might just like go back to doing like a quick one just to like make myself not feel horrible about this. Maybe if I define the, the cheek a little bit more, maybe that helps. A little bit of tone on this side. Yeah, let's just take a break from that area. Let's go to the clavicle. The clavicle's my friend, right? <laughs> Maybe the clavicle won't be so horrible to me. All right, I am doing a little smudging, but you can see I'm also using the kneaded eraser to like push things around. And you know, we only have like a minute left, so let's just go in and do like a little bit of the ear because I totally lost it. Like it, it just disappeared when <laughs> I was doing the other stuff. So let's just block it in real quick, like that. Oh man, these eyes. I, I think it's still too straight across. I think I didn't get it to tilt enough. Is that it? Oh God, I could pick at this like all day, which I shouldn't. I mean, it's not gonna make a very good drawing if I keep picking. It's like really, really hard. Jeez. All right, well that's 12 seconds. <laughs> Okay, let's see how you guys are doing in the chat. All right, let me move over to my talking stage and let me see what you guys are up to. Tell me how you're doing 
ask me your questions about how this is going right now. Okay. Apparently we have some clavicle fans, 10,000 crows. Article says, Professor, this image is going to be the death of me. My blood is on your hands. Well, I, I can tell you guys, artists are dramatic. Like there's never a dull moment when you hang out with other artists. <laughs> Hivza Khalid says, I feel that if I have the mindset of a sacrifice drawing, I won't draw a final nice clean piece. Yeah, that's a really good way. To, it's a sacrifice, right? Vitamin says, the funny thing about being artsy or an artist, you start appreciating people's beauty, not the set beauty standards, but the individual beauty of every person around. Big bumpy nose, gorgeous. I totally agree with you. I, I think that we have a way of looking at the world that I think is different. It's not the same thing. Vitamin says, literally all my friends say, ew, my lips are ugly. Immediately I go on a rant how interesting they are and amazing for drawing. That's great. I love that so much. But people are so mean about faces. Like this is too big and this is too small. Then again, I am guilty of doing that. I do that with celebrities because I'm like, you know, they can take it. <laughs> They've already had people say terrible things about them. So I feel like a little bit less guilty. I mean, it's not really that nice that I'm doing that. <laughs> okay, Jade Leaf says, I think my rug of tone just became a shack carpet. Oh my God, this is so good. I just love it. You guys are so sassy. Itachi says, this is really difficult to think she still draws this amazingly with that pressure. Well, you know what, in some ways it's not pressure though, because it's like, I'm not making these pieces for show or because I'm submitting it to something. Like it's actually less pressure for that reason, even though I complain about it the whole time. It's just like different varieties of pressure, I suppose. Okay, let's see. Jordan says drawing and talking at the same time, really tough. It is tough, but you get used to it. I mean, when you vlog like, over a decade of teaching in classrooms and talking, it's fine. It, it really is just experience doing that. Peggy says, why don't you use simple lines to define the basic shapes and distances in the beginning of the sketching? For me, Peggy, I think it's because I don't want to make a commitment too fast. And so I think that if I were to start a drawing and be very definitive about like where things go, I actually feel less likely that I'm going to change something. And I feel that in the beginning of the drawing, you have to give yourself permission to change things because if you are too dramatic about how you put down the marks, you look at that dark mark and it's like, you don't want to change it. But if you don't have dark marks and the image is very mushy looking, you're much more likely to change it. So that's for me, it's just giving myself a lot more flexibility. So that's one way to think about it. But yeah, I mean, I'm trying to do simple lines. I don't know if they're going to cross that way, but that's what I try to do. And you guys will also notice that I never start with the features. Eyes, nose, and mouth. Usually when I see people doing images of heads, more often than not, they are starting with the eyes, nose, and mouth. And I don't do that because the eyes, nose, and mouth, there's nothing structural about them. And you have to have a skull. The skull is your friend when you guys draw portraits. The eyeballs, it's like, yeah, I know the eyeballs are popular, but they're kind of annoying and like are treating you crappily. And you know, it's kind of like those popular girls in high school that I hated. So, um, Scott says, is direct drawing okay? I feel like people talk about needing to do construction or using a name slash copyrighted method a lot, but I just kind of slap down the cheekbone and eye sockets and run with it. Yep, that's what I do. <laughs> I mean, Maybe some people think I'm nuts for just relying on my eyes, but I feel that it's more simple because I don't have to memorize things. Like I'm bad at numbers. I don't like measuring. Like I just want to like go for it. That, that's how I do it. And it, it just sounds really barbaric. I know, but that's how I draw. And you know something, you guys, it might not be your cup of tea. Like if those structural things like the measurements and the proportions from like Loomis and stuff. If you like that and it works for you, go ahead. You know, I always tell people, don't just study with me, okay? Study with other people and then step back and say, what do I like? Because when I think about my teaching experience, I really do think about myself almost like as a patchwork quilt 
of all my previous professors. Like I, I took this from that teacher. I took that from another teacher. I mean, ultimately I did find my own identity, but it took a while. Like it took like a good five years before I really felt like I had my own identity as a teacher. And now everything's just all mixed in and stuff like that. But I do think that studying the same subject with multiple people really, really helpful, you guys. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> that last drawing is so annoying that I think I'm gonna just start a new one. We're just gonna do a 20 minute pose and just do that. <laughs> We're not gonna keep killing that other one. I think it's time to move on. <laughs> So, okay, we'll, we'll start again. Because again, as much as I really want to finish something off and prove to the world that I don't suck at drawing, I do think there's value in you guys really seeing, like, what, what does it mean to, like, really make something and be able to just step away? Because I think if you get picky about it and you're all fussy and I want to make... I don't know that that's good either. I think there is such a thing as like just moving on and having that be the case. Okay, so let me find the next reference photo. Let me see what we have up. Um, oh, you guys are gonna kill me for this one. <laughs> are you ready? Let's look at this. <laughs> okay, this is, I love this photo. This photo. It's hard for you guys to see, but there is a little tear on the left-hand side. And, and normally that annoys me. Like, you know, in movies where people have like one tear, it's so stupid, but I actually love this drawing. This photo is, is really, really beautiful. Okay, so let's do 20 minutes and that's all we're gonna do. We're not gonna pick. We're just gonna do the gesture and go. Okay, 20 minutes to get started. This is mess. Like you guys thought the last one was foreshortened. This is really foreshortened. This one's gonna drive us all crazy. That's good though. You know what, you guys, you should be biting off more than you can chew, don't you think? I, mean, I know I'm driving some of you nuts with these images that are like so hard to do, but like, wouldn't you rather do something that's like kind of gutsy and difficult that doesn't risk your life like skydiving? <laughs> like, and just be adventurous there. And you know what, you guys, I'd much rather, I think, do something where I fall on my face and it's really hard than to do something that's manageable. Because I don't think art should be manageable. I think it should be a risk. And whatever version of that risk, you know, that's up to you. But I am not interested in doing work that's manageable. I don't think that's fun. Okay. Yeah, like the, the actually, whoa, the nose is so large that actually the mouth is like underneath. Oh, that's crazy. You know something, this drawing might actually be easier than the last one because the foreshortening, it's like so severe that it actually, it looks so weird that you almost can't do anything. Like the last one was like little foreshortening, but not that much. So I actually think the last one was maybe harder for that reason, because it was more subtle. This one's like, Oh man, like like that Montaigne image, Dead Christ. If you guys haven't seen that, look it up. Dead Christ, Andrea Montaigne, weirdest foreshortened image. Okay, see here, I'm looking at the direction of the hair. Wow, look at that. The ears like all the way up here. That is crazy looking. All right. And then I just want to get the, the shape of the hair coming down. I guess I can't really see their shoulders. Maybe there's a little shoulder here. It's a little bit hard to tell. Okay, let me get, see, I just wanna get the direction of the hair. The hair is pretty important, like especially the split down the middle. And there might actually be more, I think maybe a little more towards the top. Yeah, like don't, you guys really don't underestimate how much head is back there. There's a lot, like you don't think there is, but there really is. Okay, all right, I already feel that, I, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> okay. Um, the brow is very important here, and so are the eye sockets. Well, they always are. <laughs> not like that's anything new, that's not news. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the lower lids like this. See, when I see that to your guys, all I think about is that scene in Dark Phoenix where Magneto finds out that Mystique died, and then he like goes over and he like leans on the post, and this one tear comes down, and he looks all mad and tortured. 
I don't know. I don't really like it when he's in a good mood. I like it when he's like upset and like a tortured soul. It's like Mr. Rochester. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to stay on task. I promise I'm going to behave. <laughs> I think it, I, just, I was up late. I was, I stayed up to like one last night because I was watching a Michael Fassbender movie. I was like, I can't turn it off. I need to watch this. <laughs> Tell me you guys, what time you went to bed last night? Like, do you guys stay up late? Or are you going to bed early, like a responsible person, unlike me, which I am not. I'm always like, I can stay up. It's fine. And then like the next morning, I'm like, why? Why did I do that? I should have gone to bed sooner. So my approach right now, it's a little bit more geometric. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm trying to be a little more structured because I feel like in the last one, the structure sort of got away from me a little bit. And I didn't like that. So now I'm going to tilt my head back because I want to reevaluate this forehead. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then there's this like big tuft of hair that comes through. Like, does everybody see these strokes in the hair? They're important. Like they really do, I think, contribute to what's going on. Oh, and that, is that too high? Where does that line up? Oh, no, actually, this is not high enough. Okay, so do you guys see how I compare things? Like I say... Where is this corner in relation to this section of the hair? And I do see that that's higher. And then like, where is the bottom of the, no, not nose, ear, <laughs> I don't know my body parts, compared to the eye and it lines up about there. So that's how I do proportions. It's not a system. So whatever, you guys, you know, whatever works for you. I'm not gonna judge about the technique. I, all I can do is teach my technique, okay? And then whether you choose, that's your cup of tea, you know? Maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. Okay, yeah, this is totally easier because it's such a wonky photo. Like the point of view is crazy. Okay, it's definitely time for rugged tone. So let me just flop in a lot of darks up here. Yeah, this hair is actually, this hair is easier. Like that last photo, the hair was just like a mass of black tone and I found it really hard to work with. This one's actually easier because there's more structure to how the head is organized. So I'm having an easier time for that reason. So I, I know that obviously, right, we have to work from photos quite a bit. And I, I don't have anything against people working from photos. I just think that there, there are things you have to be able to recognize like when the photo is making your life more difficult because it oftentimes does. And I think people don't realize that. Um, because it's easy to say, oh, that's black, let's just color it in. But you can't think about it that way. It's not the same. Ugh, this Conte crown's a little bit too big. I'm gonna go to the smaller piece like that. And let me just block in, because the image is it's getting a little fragmented, which I don't like. I want it to have a little more flow. And there's a big shadow that comes down here. And actually this, I, I need a bigger Conte crown. So I'm gonna come in here. This is all dark, so let's just get it in like that. Okay, and maybe even more. I, I'm not gonna color it in. I just wanna accentuate the fact that there's something here because I don't really think that I need to get in that specific. There, okay, sorry. I'm not holding this very well for you guys to see. Okay, let me take a step back. The lighting is coming from above and it's more in the middle. This is gonna get really dark really fast, but I'll go in and I'm gonna fix it. That, that's what you have to tell yourself. You're like, okay, even though it's turning into a mushy mess right now, I am gonna go in and I'm gonna fix it. And it, it, it hopefully gets better, I hope. <laughs> okay, let me redefine the cheekbones. I feel like I lost those a little bit. So let me just stretch my kneaded eraser, which of course is like now orange. Okay, let's try that. Like this. Okay. Lift out the ear and pull out the cheekbones like that. And here too, I'm also gonna pull out the cheekbones and just get them so they're more prominent. They might not actually be that prominent, but whatever. I, I would rather like overdo something than underdo it. Like I would rather the highlights be more severe than they actually are because I don't know it's like if you try to aim for accuracy it always ends up sort of like watered down like I always think things look better 
when they're like over exaggerated. So that's what I aim for. I mean, it's up to you guys what you would like to do. Um, yeah, like let me pull out this cheek and this chin down here. I mean, what I like about the kneaded eraser, I really do feel like I'm like sculpting with the form. That's what's really fun about it. So if you guys have not used the kneaded eraser before, I recommend you try it. It's just really, really fun. Okay. You know, I feel like I'm, shoot. Oh, oh, there's a muscle here. Here we go. I need a little more of the crease. Oh, shoot. Okay, she needs more cheekbone down here. So let's accentuate that some more. And actually this gets pretty dark, so I really should just darken all that. So you guys notice one of the things that I do is I, I really try to keep the image cohesive. So there, there's like a flow that starts to happen. It's not always easy though, because sometimes you really want things to be like defined, but by making them defined, you actually fragment. So it's like, where's the divide? Like how, how do you, make things distinctive without making them get too fragmented and then how do you make them flow without making things get mushy and it's hard it's really hard to do both at the same time okay let's work on the forehead a little bit because actually the forehead is like such a large part of this portrait so actually i should step back i think there's less chin down here is there yeah, let, let's let's redo that outline down here. It's hard. It's like I keep wanting to add more, but maybe the nose needs more. Oh, the nose is like too. I, I didn't add enough like highlight here. Let's just pull that out because I feel like the edge of the nose should be more visible and I definitely did not do the nose right. So let's pull out the nostrils a little bit more. All right, who here, tell me in the chat, do you guys think this photo is harder or easier than the last one? I'm gonna say that I think it's easier because it's more dramatic and the angles are so funky that you just, it, it's like more okay for the trying to look weird. Okay, let, let's really go to town on the hair because I just want this to have a sense of action, okay? I only have a few minutes to work, but I do want to like capture, like I said, it's the personality. That's what I want to capture. Okay. Um, let's jump back up here because I don't think I spent enough time on the hair. And then see, this is really light. I, I have to show the part that's going down the center. So let's just, but there's highlights here too. So that's a little bit tricky. The very least, I just, I just want to loosen this up so it, it doesn't feel so tight. Maybe a little eraser stick work. Oh, now I regret that. Don't do that. That's bad. That's too soon. I, I don't think I like it when it's that soon. Okay. Maybe here, like there's a really strong highlight in the hair. Let's pull that out. And then there's this one here too. So that's helpful. And then maybe here, let's just pull out a little strand looks a little bit better. And then here, oh, that purple crown sucks. Okay, let's, because the, the forehead, I definitely am not giving it the volume that it needs. I think because the shadow is not happening. So let's get the forehead to be a little bit bolder. And I think that should help. Yeah, that's better. Okay, good. Progress. Yay. Um, really want this brow to like pop. I really want that to happen. Maybe a little bit of shading. Uh, and let's see, this, this should be more pronounced. Like this brow is pretty dark, I would say. And this also is pretty dark. Um, I think with these beautiful pieces of shading and maybe the nose is like, I, I feel like maybe this shadow's too much. Yeah, like I'm finally having fun with my eraser. It's <laughs> really cool. Okay, maybe re-accentuate here because I really lost some of that stuff. And then pull this aside. Oh shoot, now I'm like losing all the strokes. 
it's hard. It's like you put something there, you take it away, you put it back, you take it away. I gotta work on the brow. I think it's it's so much more pronounced than I have it. I don't know. I guess I don't like drawing the wrinkles because I feel like they're just like drawn on. Like it, they're hard. It's hard to make them look more three dimensional. So I think part of it is just not making them that obvious. So usually when I'm doing these wrinkles, what I'll do is I'll put them in, but then I'll like remove them a little bit because otherwise it's like too much. Okay, let's try that. Oh my God, what a beautiful photo. Of course I am like not doing that great with the drawing, but whatever. Okay, maybe a little here. Let's just put in some like bold lines. Cause I do love the hair in this image. The hair is gorgeous. Dusty. Okay, let's really redefine this because I just do feel like I, I like lost. Is that the jawbone? Like I, I think it's like, like this is the cheekbone. Oh no, that's not good. Let's fix this. I think that like is that the cheekbone? It's so foreshortened that it's really hard to tell. I think that's the cheekbone, and then this is the jawbone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. There's the jawbone right there. That's the jawbone. Oh, that's so much better. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. Let me erase maybe some of that. Oh. I think I need some eraser stick action in the hair. Like just a few streaks. Not nothing that dramatic. A couple things up here. Let's pull that aside. Okay, and maybe the part down the center. Can just do a little bit, a little smudging. I don't like to do a lot, but sometimes it's helpful. So maybe in there, and then just a couple touches on this side so the hair really feels a little bit more visceral. Hair is hard. Like I, I'm just pulling out a couple highlights. Okay, that probably was too much. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, I lost this corner. Okay, that is definitely not helping. This corner needs to be more, yeah, it, it needs to be more like boxy, I suppose. Yeah, that is better. Okay. I, I think it's like I lost the skeletal structure in that area. And maybe I should push this out some more. So it's more like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's bring back the zygomatic arch. Yeah, zygomatic arch was disappearing. Let's pull it all the way up to here, like just lift out some of that. And let me see. Where's that? Is that it? Oh, okay. This transition needs to be more. I need to lift more. I gotta emphasize those cheekbones. And maybe that will be better. Yeah. Okay, I lost this tuft of hair, so let's put that little bit of hair back and pull this up like that. And maybe I'll just do a little bit smudging here. Um, cause some, sometimes I like the, the texture versus the smudging is always kind of a nice thing to show in a drawing. So I, I sort of like that some areas are soft and other areas are not. That, that can be a really fun thing to do. Oh no, I do remember this. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah, the hair is bugging me. Well, I mean, everything's bugging me, but <laughs> um, take a step back. I think I want the like bags under the eyes to be a little bit more prominent like that. And let's do a little bit of eyelashes. The eyelashes, they're, they're pretty prominent, but I don't want to do too much. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a lot of erasing for the eyelashes. I'm just going to make them like smudge a little and then maybe pull out a couple highlights like this. Um, oh shoot, I want the lighting to be better. It's not great. And these contours are still bugging me. Like, I just, do I need something just more definitive? Is that all it is? I don't know, it's really hard to say. It's weird. Okay, maybe this needs to be a little darker. Yeah, maybe let's just give it a little Maybe that's a little more subtle. 
So sometimes what I do is I'll like smudge here, but then I'll like put some tone here. And then I'll go back in with my kneaded eraser and just like pull out a couple sections like that. And sometimes that gives it a little bit more surface that I can work with. Uh, I'm losing this. I need my eraser stick to dry me out. This little section here needs to be a little bit more pronounced. Let's put that there. Oh, and this eyelid. See, I feel like I'm having to go through and like redefine a lot of these spots. It's tricky. Oh, and then this. Oh, I gotta lift out this. That's it, right? Maybe a little darker there. More eye eyelashes. Oh, is that better? I don't know. Oh yeah, one minute. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, now I got one minute, guys. We we gotta go to town on this. So let's just give it a couple eraser stick strokes like this. That. Maybe a couple moments up here. I need 38 seconds. This is too late. And then, oh, 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 I want this one hair to come in. <laughs> oh, yes. Some softness up here. I want more confident strokes. Confidence. That's what we need. All right, that's it, you guys. Let me stop the timer and let's see how you guys did. Okay, let me go and do this talk. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. Oh, sorry, let me move my mic so that way you guys can hear me. Annette says, a hairdresser at 40 years and an artist, I always tell everybody the imperfection is what makes them beautiful. I love that, Annette. That is wonderful. That's terrific, especially from a hairdresser. Like, you really want to hear something like that. David says, Loomis and those other methods for someone who already understands the form is a really easy way to start mass producing drawings for beginner is just blindly following instructions, I'd say. Mariska says, I wish I can show you my results to have your critique on this. Well, you know what you guys can do is you can submit for an art prof share, which is where we give you guys a shout out during one of our YouTube videos. And so you can actually submit here. If you guys go to tutorials, there is a page that looks like this as art prof share forms, press on the button and then you guys can do that. That's a good way to get some feedback for free. So that would be a little bit better. And yes, join the Discord, says Audible. You can share your drawings there for sure. And oh, we got a birthday. Happy birthday, Dusty. Hope you're having a good day so far. And let's see, Ruka Dior says, the jawbone is a little up at the middle of the nose level. And Eleonora says, when drawing something like that, I like to look at shapes. Yes, there are some anatomy basics, but I don't want to think I'm drawing the chin. I prefer to think I'm drawing a triangle. Yeah, Eleonora, that helps me too. Like really thinking abstractly about the face, I think is very, very helpful. Because when you start thinking about a face, it's a little bit too much. Guys, Art Prof has a Spotify, which apparently is tiny for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why that slide is so small, but um, we are also on iTunes and please join me in the Discord. I will be there in about two minutes, hanging out in the Draw Alongs channel and everybody post your stuff that you made. I love seeing that. I will do the exact same thing. If you're not in the Discord, shame on you. Join us in the Discord. The invite link is in the video description below. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join the Art Prof family. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters. Thank you to everybody who showed up and drew with me and gave your opinions. It's so much fun, you guys. I look forward to these 
every single time. The energy is just so palpable and inspiring. So thank you so much. I'll see you next time.